I, I mean, I can't imagine. Let's talk about leasing to begin with, sure. after having covered the Boeing news, how it's changed, really, over the past 10, 25 years. Well, listen, leasing has grown tremendously. In fact, it was the, it's the fastest form of uh, growth of the way to finance aircraft and, and has been. It's currently about 40 percent of the marketplace. So, yes, we've experienced tremendous growth. Uh, and actually, the, the, the aircraft investment space has actually grown really, really well. Aircraft have proven to be a very, very good, stable investment over time, so it's attracted additional capital. That's good for our business. We need billions and billions and billions of dollars to buy aircraft over the next several years. So uh, the industry has grown, uh, has grown, it's prospered, uh, it's continued to yield good results for its investors. Have, have you seen anything like, let's take the MAX. Yes. Have you ever seen anything like it in terms of disrupting uh, Honestly, no. No, it's, it, it's a very difficult situation. It's difficult for all involved. These tragic uh, crashes impact all of us who have aviation in our blood. Uh, I do believe, though, that uh, I have a lot of confidence in the regulatory authorities. I have a lot of confidence in the Boeing company. It's just a question of time before the aircraft gets recertified. The, the airline industry needs this aircraft. We need this aircraft. We have a number of them on order. We're big believers in the aircraft. We're big believers in the industry. But it has been a very difficult time for the Boeing company, and, and we we hope, uh, and actually we have a high degree of confidence that this will be over sooner rather than later. Right. Uh, um, more more sell side commentary out today yes. suggesting a return to service in I think maybe mid Q2, Q1. Uh, it's, I mean, having, having gone through last year, who knows? Yeah, I mean, you know, at this point, you know, no one is predicting, and I, and I just don't think it's right to predict. I think uh, the regulatory process will take its time. About estimated 400 737 MAX that are parked around yes. uh, the country around the world right yes. now awaiting uh, that return to service and then yes. to be able to be certified and delivered. How long is it going to take for all those aircraft to be absorbed into fleets yeah. like yours? We said on our last earnings call that our opinion, not Boeing's opinion, but our yeah. opinion was we thought it was going to take about two years for all those aircraft to finally be reabsorbed. There's a lot of different factors, and we still think that's about right. Are you in settlement talks with Boeing? So we, Boeing's a big supplier of us, and we've had ongoing discussions now for many, many months with Boeing, and we're able to uh, work out some, um, some settlement issues with them, uh, primarily oriented at helping our customers, because the airlines, our end user, the people who pay us our rent, are the most deeply affected. So Boeing's been very helpful with our customers, and therefore it's helped us getting our lease payments and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah. Your cost of capital, I notice, is pretty low. I mean, you just sold five-year bonds at 2.3%. We did, yes. uh, I would assume a low-rate environment is extraordinarily helpful overall to your business and a risk of higher rates seemingly yes. the other way. Yeah, that's true. We're very capital-intensive business, so lower interest rates are always helpful. Uh, we, do, uh, we do have some protections in our business and our forward leases. They are adjusted. They're based upon the existing rates at the time of delivery. So we do have adjustment factors in there. But certainly for capital-intensive business, low rates are good. I remember the old days where leasing uh, and low-cost capital meant Kiwis, you know, <laughs> startup carriers, <laughs> right. People's Express, right? right? All these startups would come in and just yes. torment <laughs> legacy carriers. Yes. Why? Does, is that not happening? Mean, am I crazy? Is that not happening as much as it did, say, in the 90s? Well, I think, you know, the, the huge growth in the airline industry has, in fact, been due to low-cost carriers and ultra-low-cost carriers. It's that affordability of air travel and the increasing frequency pairs, fly, flying to smaller and second, uh, secondary tertiary cities, which people want. They don't want to make a stop. So um, that has, in fact, been the largest and the, and the fastest-growing segment of the airline industry is low-cost carriers globally. Uh, we've seen people like Norwegian also try and go long-haul low-cost, which is a more difficult model. But certainly all across the globe now, in all continents, uh, you know, the, the, the real growth has been in the low-cost sector. All right. But in North America and the U.S.? Absolutely true. Yeah. Absolutely. You have airlines like Spirit and Frontier and, and many others that, uh, you know, specialize in the low-cost model, and they're having huge traction. Where is the biggest demand for your services coming from right now? Right now it's Asia. It's about 42 percent of our business, uh, and about 16 uh, percent of that is China. The rest is the rest of Asia. But clearly Asia remains the largest growth market. Uh, for us now and in the future. Just to go back to this deadly um, crash yes. in Iran a couple of days ago, how closely are you watching that, especially given the fact that there are some reports that maybe perhaps there could have been a bomb, it could have been missiles? Yeah, another tragedy. Um, we're, look, we're watching it very, very closely. Just really too early for anyone to speculate on what's happening, but certainly we didn't need another really tr uh, tragic incident involving any 737 or any aircraft at all. Uh, we, we are watching closely, and, and um, you know we're in touch with Boeing, and, and, uh, and we're just trying to find out uh, as, as much as we possibly can. But frankly, I, I know no, no more. No, I don't know anything more than any of you do right now. Do you work with the airlines though when you, when you see like geopolitical tensions flaring in a place like Iran, and say, yes. you know what, 
the aircraft you're leasing from us, you know, please don't bring them in and out of yeah, that country. Our, are those conversations that happen? Yeah, uh, more than that. Our leases very specifically uh, indicate that at all times uh, the operation of the aircraft has to be compliant with U.S. law. Okay. So, yes, we do interact with our customers globally. When there are situations like this, we understand they go through difficult times. But most airlines, for example, are avoiding Iran and Iraq. Uh, uh, now and th these things happen they're unfortunate but they do happen and we are in touch with our customers to see if there's any way how can we be helpful do they need another aircraft do they need to extend leases what do they need to do so we're, we're trying to be helpful but generally speaking we're, we're pretty strict upon uh, compliance laws.